Bim Mindos, and welcome to my channel. I've been a fan of D&D for a very long time, and beyond the very cool dice, great storytelling, and imaginary worlds, I fell in love with the miniatures. I painted my first minis around that time, and have been painting them ever since. So follow along with my channel, and see if this old dog gamer can learn some new tricks. Episode 43, Spending Halloween with Lethal Shadows. In honor of the holiday this week, I decided to paint The Shape and Groovy Hunter from Lethal Shadows Miniatures. I've mentioned Lethal Shadows before, I think they have an amazing selection of unique minis that will spice up any game. They also have an expanded line of accessories and dice, as well as a paint line that I have yet to try. I really recommend checking out their website. If my budget was bigger, I'd be getting a lot more from them, not just minis. I went with speed paints for this project as I felt they would do well with the right Xenothal Prime, and they came through wonderfully. I don't know about you, but Halloween is my favorite holiday. As a kid, the costumes were my favorite part. I remember every October we'd head to the department store and look at the selection they had. Seeing all those boxes on the shelves with the little plastic faces peeking out from the cellophane windows, that would always increase my excitement for the holiday while simultaneously overwhelming me with options. The costumes I had when I was a little kid were Casper, the Fawns, Beretta, and Batman. I can remember the vinyl one-piece costumes that were really meant as one use only. By the end of the night, it was guaranteed that at least one seam would split or start to split. And those masks, thin, flimsy, plastic, small eye holes, and the elastic band stapled directly to the mask. I'm amazed we all survived childhood. Those masks were the worst to see out of when I was around five. The one costume I would wear outside of the Halloween was the Batman. I grew up watching the recent at the time reruns of the Adam West Batman series. I loved it. I'd watch them every day after school while in my costume and then act out the episode in the backyard. Good times. Lethal Shadow shipped the minis with separate bases, which doesn't always happen with mini companies. But I love this because it makes it so much easier to paint the hard to reach areas. I have my parents to thank for my love of the holiday. My mom loved helping us with the costumes we didn't buy from the store. Any reason to pull out our sewing machine and just create. My father, on the other hand, was busy making plans to scare the crap out of trick-or-treaters when they came to the door for candy. Fun fact, my dad proposed to my mom on Halloween. How's that for awesome? One year, I remember, he trimmed one of the bushes down next to the front door. Took an old white sheet, drew a ghost face on it, and then draped it over the top of the bush. He then tied a string to the center branch and moved the stereo speakers to the front windows. Blasting the album, Sounds to Make You Shiver, into the front yard. When someone knocked or rang the bell, he tugged on the string, causing the ghost to shake. It freaked everyone out who came to the front door. I remember one kid jumped and yelled, I'm going to knock that sheet right off your ass. They were one of the older kids in the neighborhood. And they were justified in their response. Earlier in the evening, I fell victim to one of the other fathers in the area. I approached a house down the block and seemed a little bit off. The jack-o'-lanterns were carved nicely and had candles burning inside, but the porch light was off. I thought I would take a chance. After all, my parents were right there to save me before I got killed, right? As I approached, I saw a typical stuffed scarecrow sitting in a lawn chair with a giant bowl of candy laying in its lap. The sign on the scarecrow said, Went to bed early. Help yourself. Be honest. And my naive little brain said, Cool. Self-serve. Scanning my options, I made my choice and went to drop it in my bag just as the scarecrow said, Good choice. And sat up straight. Holy fuckballs, that was the fastest I think I've ever run in my whole life. I was so hoarse from screaming by the time my feet touched the sidewalk, 
I had lost most of my voice. But that was the way we grew up. Small neighborhoods where everyone knew each other. and We would walk around safe to trick or treat. A place where every other house had some big scare or fantastic decorations. You know, back when we still had a strong middle class. <clears throat> year after year, I would dress up. My mom helping me with the homemade costumes during my Star Wars years. The Halloween soon after I saw Star Wars in theaters, I wanted to be Obi-Wan Kenobi. The previous Christmas, Santa, I still had to pretend for my little sister, had brought me one of the original lightsabers, and it was perfect for my costume. Using another costume made for some religious pageant, we repurposed it to look like Obi-Wan's robes. The following year, it was Han Solo's turn, and my mom helped me make the black vest from the first movie. I even found something to wear around my neck to represent the medal he got at the end. I don't remember what I used, but I do remember having to explain what it was multiple times. Glad I got better at costume props. As I got older and headed off to high school, I turned to the dark side of Halloween and embraced the now common pastime of horror films. With a subscription to Fangoria magazine and a hot glue gun, I made some pretty gory props and focused more on the scare, less on the costumes. Our porch was perfect for scary and spooky. It was narrow and almost cave-like, especially when we had the fake webs up. Swapping out the porch lights with everything from colored bulbs to black lights, we were able to set the perfect Halloween mood for the candy-starved munchkins that came to the door. I'm sure my parents were concerned about me, you know, playing D&D &D and summoning demons and stuff. They knew I would never summon a demon. If I summoned anything into my room, it would have been Tiffany. For Halloween my senior year, I dressed as Steve Dallas from Bloom County. During that time, the comic characters had formed a metal band called Death Tongue, later changed to Billy and the Boingers, and naturally, Steve was their greedy manager. Using an image directly from the comments, I wore my nicest, closest thing to white dress shirt, a red necktie, a best pair of 501s, and instead of the Death Tongue t-shirt he had on top of his dress shirt, I used one of my lovely Misfit shirts. <laughs> Yay, Catholic school. For the briefcase, I wanted something slim and light, but all my dad had were mini suitcases. We did have a nice backgammon set and a beautiful case, and I never remember seeing anyone play it. The case was exactly what I needed, so I taped a sign on one side that said Death Tongue, and on the other side one that read, Nancy just says no. Topped it all off with a pair of aviator sunglasses and a cigarette in my mouth, and I was good to go. The school didn't like the cigarette, so I had to go smoke that on my break. This year for Halloween, I went with Sam from Trick or Treat. If you haven't seen the movie, do yourself a favor. I'm glad my employer is big on Halloween. We had contests and a costume parade, judging of the costumes and the decorations. I didn't win anything, but it creeped everyone out by not saying anything and just lurking at the back. It took my co-workers quite a while to figure out it was me under that mask, but I had fun with it. With the shape done, it was time to move on to the Groovy Hunter. Out of the two minis, this one is my favorite and I really liked how he turned out.
It was also around high school that I discovered another Halloween treat, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I saw it for the first time in 1987, and I've since watched it over a hundred times. Sitting in the theater, having no idea what to expect, I knew I was hooked the moment the movie began and the audience started yelling things at the screen. I watched every moment trying to memorize the lines being yelled, as well as trying to hear the dialogue from the movie. Years went by and I had multiple versions of the soundtrack I would play over and over again, trying to get the songs and timing down. I managed to find the audience participation album and couldn't pass that up. That was the entire movie recorded in front of the New York cast and audience that began the whole Rocky following. I listened to it over and over, memorizing the script while picking up good lines to shout. Not everything on that album was a gem, but the ones that were, were awesome. Right around 20, I found myself involved in a local cast called Arnold Atrocities. We would each play a character and act out the film on the stage in front of the screen. We would perform three to four times a year when the film was played, always during October. I began with a small part, had so much fun. When the movie was shown, it was always be on a Friday and Saturday night midnight showing. The main cast members would perform on Saturday and these were the performers who knew the character inside and out and had the best costume. On Friday nights, however, it was the opportunity for the other cast members to try their hand at main characters or to just trade places with another cast member for the night. One Friday night show in particular, we performed what we called Hacky Horror Night. The Saturday night performers switched roles to the opposite gender of their character. I played as Columbia, full costume and makeup, but couldn't do heels, so I wore Doc Martens instead. That night, I was also in charge of security, and the people who volunteered for it were too nice. During the dinner scene, some drunk-ass audience member was being totally disruptive, and the volunteers were politely asking him to leave. Once it started getting out of hand, I jumped up, stormed over to the dumbass, picked him up, threw him over my shoulder, and escorted him out the front door. I was finally able to get the role of the narrator, aka criminologist, and eventually made my way to Saturday nights, but I wanted a bigger part. I was able to practice for and get a chance to play Dr. Frankenfurter, and I loved that part. I finally made it onto the Saturday night cast as Frank, and I was loving it. Believe it or not, my mom was still able to help me with my costume. Even at 21, she was still making my costumes. I miss her a lot. I performed that part for over a year, but it was time to step down and I was just starting a family. So that was the end for me. Years later, I went to a showing here locally because my daughter was part of the cast. Things were done differently than my day. We used an actual motorcycle inside the theater. But I had fun and it felt nice to pass the torch.
The first horror film I ever saw was Alien when I was 10, and I loved it. Say what you will, but at its core, Alien is a horror film, just with a big sci-fi twist to it. The terror and suspense built up in that movie was amazing, and I still watch it from time to time. There are some staple films that I will always watch this time of year. Top of my list is Young Frankenstein. That one will always be a classic and never gets old. This is, of course, the original Halloween 1 and 2. However, I do like the Rob Zombie remake, and we'll substitute that one in every other year. Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Evil Dead, Reanimator, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Nightbreed, Hellraiser, It, Christine, Chucky, Salem's Lot, filmed nearby, actually. Creepshow, Hammer Films, The Universal Monsters, Tales from the Isle, Fade to Black, When a Stranger Calls, Psycho, the list is endless. Being scared is fun when in a controlled environment, like a movie theater or your living room. But have you ever gone to a haunted house? I've been to several, and they ranged from a lame museum of spirit Halloween jump scare decorations to an immersive experience that looked too real to be just entertainment. I love seeing the creativities of the performers, their scene, the makeup and effects, the whole package. When my daughter was about 11 years old, she asked me, nay, begged me, to take her to the local haunted house. I was skeptical at first. She wasn't the bravest of kids, but she swore up and down that she wanted to go and get scared. With reluctance, I took us to the event and spent an hour in line to buy tickets and another hour waiting to be taken through. The whole time she was on the edge of her seat, she couldn't wait to see it all. Sitting there, fascinated with the costumes people were wearing, she had the biggest grin on her face and I started to believe she would enjoy the experience. When it was finally our turn, I saw that she was getting nervous, but still had that giant grin on her face. As soon as the tour began, she started shaking and the smile disappeared. It was going to be a long 10 minutes as we traveled through the house of horrors. She turned to me and she said she changed her mind, but we were past the point of no return and she was gonna have to stick it out. Within a couple of minutes of walking through the different scenes, nothing too graphic, she started crying that I could hear her over the music and sound effects that were blasting all around us. I had to almost push her through the maze of displays, all the while telling her the only way out was through. With every passing moment, she looked more and more scared. She wasn't even looking around. The situation itself seemed to be scaring her. Several minutes later, we were outside breathing fresh air. Well, I was breathing. My daughter was hyperventilating. I finally got her calmed down enough to walk to the car, but she insisted I drive with the dome light on so she could clearly see what's in the back seat. Even stopping at the grocery store, a well-lit grocery store, she was jumping at everything and looking around corners before walking down an aisle, totally in panic mode. We got her groceries, got in the car, drove home with the dome light on, and pulled into the driveway. As I shut off the car and unbuckled my seatbelt, I heard my daughter say, Dad? Can we go again tomorrow night? 
My children have proven themselves to be as crazy, if not more so, than I was when it came to Halloween. Despite her first experience at a haunted house, she has gone to one every year since. It still gets the literal piss scared out of her, but she's laughing the whole time instead of crying. After the speed paint was done, it was time to clean up the mini and define some of the details with Fanatic War Paints. I would share this video with you, but there are some times when I just want to paint without the camera. So let's jump to the end step where I hit the minis with quick shades. When I was browsing the Lethal Shadows website earlier this year, I stumbled across the Lake Knight sculpt, paying fantasy homage to Jason Voorhees. I saw Friday the 13th before I saw Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers, so I was immediately drawn to it. I couldn't wait to paint him and promised myself if I liked how it came out, I would get more before Halloween came. Well, I loved how it turned out and fulfilled my promise by picking up this episode's stars, The Shape and Groovy Hunter. Next year, I'm planning on adding the Dream Slayer and Walking Doll to my collection. As long as they keep making pop culture meets fantasy minis, I'll keep buying them. I've also had my eye on their Paint Scepter. While my method does do the job, I think having a flexible mount would be easier to paint with. I'm hoping to pick one up after the first of the year, unless Santa brings me one. Hey, I still have to pretend for my little sister. The minis turned out amazing, and I will find a way to work them into my future campaigns, maybe even as a player character with the Groovy Hunter. I really love how Lethal Shadows mixes pop culture with fantasy to design minis like these. I had picked up the Lake Knight and painted earlier this year, making it a set of three pop culture monsters for my collection. I hope you like my special Halloween episode as much as I enjoyed making it. 
I want to do more next year, so I will spend some time looking through the Lethal Shadows catalog and saving up my pennies. That's it for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes. Give the like button a high five and increase the exposure. And share the video on your favorite platform to help broaden the audience. Next episode will be delayed, but I promise it'll be something never before seen on this channel. Until then, remember, they ain't gonna paint themselves. <laughs>